Are you trying to figure out what it's like living in Florida? Will you even like living in Jacksonville? I've got five things you need to know before you even get here. Hey everyone, I'm Elizabeth Peters with eXp Realty and I'm a realtor here in beautiful Northeast Florida. Jacksonville continues to dominate lists as one of the top cities to live in 2022. And it's no surprise with the amount of job growth and opportunities, which also led to a continued increase in income as well. But in today's video, I wanted to share some real things you still need to know before moving here. The fact that we do not pay state income taxes is a huge contributing factor that brings people to the area. But there's a very important thing I want you to know, and that is in order to sort of balance that out, property taxes are gonna be much higher here than other places that do have to pay state taxes. Although you will have several exemptions available to you that will hopefully lighten some of that load if you are a property owner in Florida. However, while our property taxes are certainly not the best, we're still certainly not the worst. As of 2022, Florida sits at about 0.98% for the entire state, which is just below the national average. It does vary depending on the area and the neighborhood, but Duval County right now is at about 0.85%. Right now, the average median price for a home in Jacksonville is about 315,000. That would mean you could expect to pay somewhere around $2,700 a year for property taxes. So just remember, while our property taxes are gonna be higher because of the no state income tax, Florida still sits just slightly below the national average and Jacksonville sits just slightly below the state average. You see, not the best, but not the worst either, just kind of somewhere right in the middle. But this is definitely a conversation you should have with whichever realtor you decide to work with when you're starting the home buying process, since these change so frequently. The next thing I want to address is our education system. Florida, as a state, typically ranks very high in education. But Duval County does continue to lead in numbers of struggling schools right now, which can't be great. I see a lot of people choosing to send their children to Clay County or St. John's County schools, which is understandable. However, since there are still some great options in Duval County, what I recommend for buyers to do is to check out greatschools.org. You'll be able to find schools for a specific neighborhood, and you'll likely find that even in Duval County, there are some schools with above average ratings. There are great options for charter schools and private schools. Luckily, you can choose any school that's outside of the district you're living in. You would just be responsible for the transportation. Of course, you can also consider homeschooling, and I'll drop those links in the description for you to take a look at. I constantly get tons of questions about the weather and the climate. It seems to be one of the more popular topics people want to talk to me about. If you want additional information on the weather and climate, I recommend that you go to usdataclimate.com. But overall, it is hot for the majority of the year. We do get a ton of rain, which doesn't seem like a good thing for most people, but you won't catch me complaining about it. In addition, the best time to go look at homes is either during or right after a storm. Leaks in the roof, moisture in the attic, and mildew smells are all heightened on a rainy day. The humidity is usually its most ruthless during September. And then you can usually go ahead and bring out the hoodies right around November. Our winters are very mild with high temperatures averaging in the 60s and low temperatures generally somewhere in the 40s. There's absolutely no need for a snow shovel. We have about a handful of freezing days, usually between December and February. The main thing I need you to know is that Regardless of the season, some neighborhoods will flood way worse than others, and many accidents happen when people are trying to navigate flooded streets. I would avoid doing that altogether if you have the ability to just wait. I do want to address the commute times. You need to give yourself 30 minutes minimum to get where you're going no matter what. For some people this is normal, for a lot of other people coming from very small towns, 30 minutes is a long drive. If you're looking to move somewhere with a high walkability score, there are a few neighborhoods that would allow this, but not many. Overall, you will need a vehicle and it's gonna be very challenging without one. Jacksonville is huge and a lot of people moving to the area are very shocked by this. The city is spread out over 850 square miles on top of population more than 900,000 compared to the national average. We are still below average commute times. So I would say for this area, you should go ahead and plan for a 30 minute drive at a minimum Unless you're driving within your immediate neighborhood. People have their opinions that Florida is not a southern state due to the wide range of diversity. The diversity part is true. In just a matter of a one hour drive, it can seem like a completely different 
culture. It could seem like a completely different environment. I make no disputes about that. It's something that I've always embraced and feel like it's what sets us apart from some of the other states. Even just from the World Golf Village to St. Augustine Beach to downtown historic St. Augustine, it can feel like three completely different regions. Jacksonville Beach to Orange Park. Different vibes, different personalities. But I think that's what makes our area interesting and allows people to continue growing and learning from each other. While I disagree with those opinions of people saying Florida is not a southern state, I have heard people from South Florida as well as the Florida Gulf Coast label Northeast Florida as just an extension of South Georgia, which I also disagree with. In reality though, we are only about a 40 minute drive from Kingsland, Georgia. What is true, even with our state being so interestingly diverse, in this area you will still find the true authentic Southern personalities trained on Southern hospitality, the accents that require the subtitles the sweet tea addicts, the friends that take 30 minutes to say goodbye to anybody. That is still very prominent in our area. Isn't that nice? I hope this information was helpful to anyone thinking about moving or already in the process of relocating to the Jacksonville area. As always, if you're thinking about buying or selling real estate in the area, feel free to send me an email. I'm happy to help. If you did enjoy this video, please click the like button for me and consider subscribing to this channel, Elizabeth Talks Jacksonville. If you're interested in home trends, real estate in general, or what life is like in the Jacksonville area, you can also follow me on Facebook or Instagram and find more information by checking my link tree down below. Thanks so much again for watching and I hope to see you next time. Happy house hunting!